Today on Trisha, two out of control teens. What drugs I are you using? I smoke pot. Sometimes I take Oxycontin or Xanax. I drink till I throw up, then I drink some more, pass out, then drink more. Even worse, these teens have babies. How many men do you think you've been with? 20 or 30 that I know of. Do you think you're pregnant again? I think I might be. Oh. Is it true that you hit your grandmother? She there. got in the way okay. and she got hit. Today, their families are here to put a stop to it. We go one on one backstage. Who are you close to? But will it lead to a breakthrough? I did not have a childhood at all. This teen refuses to see reason. You don't want another baby, but you're not using contraception, so you could end up with 10 babies. No. But you don't want to use contraception? No. You can't do this and have a child. You better take your child. Okay. Confronting out of control teen moms. The video, don't work, don't start crying. I don't care about who got what to say about me. You have to start being a 100% parent now. We get to the heart of it today on Trisha. KK is here because her 16-year-old niece, Deborah, is dangerously violent and completely out of control. Now, KK says when Deborah loses her temper, she will punch you in the face, she will cut you. One time, she even poured bleach on her sister and hit her grandmother. Well, today, 16-year-old Deborah is also the mother of an eight-month-old boy named Jaque. But that hasn't stopped her from living a life that's going to land her in jail or in a grave. Listen to this. The boy used to be a huge track star in school. It's all changed. She used to run track, but she dropped out of school. But the last straw was when she hit my mother. My niece, Sabora, is a beast. She smokes weed, cigarettes, get drunk, and she has a baby. I called the show. Because her mother, Sharon, lets her do whatever she want to do. Sharon buys Deborah anything she wants. Clothes, sneakers, jewelry, whatever Deborah says goes. Sharon, you better do something about Deborah before she get hurt out there in them streets. OK, as you just heard, KK blames her sister, Deborah's mother, Sharon, for enabling this behavior. We'll hear from Sharon a little later. But first, KK, is, is Deborah really as bad as you're saying? Deborah hit my mother. Deborah smoked weed. Deborah drink. Deborah don't come home. She don't, she don't clean. She don't do none of the things that she's supposed to do. Deborah is better than that. The way she going, she going to end up dying, Trisha. It's, it's sad. But she started off a good kid. She started off, oh my God, I used to take her everywhere. She was like a track star. She used to, Madison Square Garden, met the mayor, Ooh. got all kinds of trophies, medals, everything. Let me talk, let me talk about Deborah as a mother. Is she a good mother? I don't mom? know about her mother skills because I never see her with a baby. My sister always got that baby. I never seen Deborah with a baby. So for me to stay here and tell you about her mother and skills, I can't do that because I never seen them. Okay, so what brings you here today? What do you want to get out of today? I just really need Deborah to understand that if she don't stop doing what she's doing, see, we are family. Some mm. people in the streets don't care about her. You understand me? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, we have her mum, Sharon, backstage, but mm -hmm. uh, does Deborah care about how her actions affect others, including her young son, including her aunt, including her mother? Well, last night, we sat down with this teen to hear her side of the story. Watch this. My name is Deborah, I'm 16 years old, and when people get in my face, they get sprayed out their boots. I'm not afraid of nothing, or nobody. Yeah, I like to drink. I drink till I throw up, then I drink some more, and then I pass out and wake up and drink again. Yeah, I broke my grandma's TV. I'd rather break her TV than break her face. The thing that pissed me off is when people talk about me, my mother, or my son, when people judge me, or when you just do anything to get on my nerves, you're gonna get beat up. I leave my son with my mom because I'm young, I like to go out and party, and that's the only person I trust my son with, and I know when I come back home, he's gonna be well taken care of. I don't think I'm a bad mother at all for not wanting to take my son out with me to go party. People need to stay out of my business and let my mom do her job and raise me. Okay, 
Okay, 16-year-old Deborah, come on out. Uh, 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 uh. You put your shoes back on. You put your shoes. Uh, 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 uh. Don't go for her. Hi. I just, I was just telling your aunt to put her shoes back on because I've been in this game long enough to know that when somebody takes their shoes off, they're going to go for somebody, and I won't stand for that here. Okay. <laughs> So you heard what your aunt had to say about you? Is she, is she right? I mean, that's her outlook. I wouldn't say she's right. So you're not violent? I mean, I'm violent, but when you get me violent, it's not like I just wake up, hey, I'm going to beat somebody up today. Is it true what she told me that you hit your grandmother? Yeah, I hit my grandmother, but it wasn't it like wasn't I no intentionally... There wasn't no reason for you to hit, hit my mother. First of all, you, KK, you were not her. there. You were I, not there. I was, I was not there, there, and I was fighting with my sister. Thank God I wasn't there. And she got in the way, okay. and she got hit. I didn't say it was right that I hit my grandmother. I'm sorry that I hit my grandmother. Okay, and I mean, what about... Sorry just ain't good enough. Did you well, I don't know what to do okay, no more. I don't know what to do. Sorry ain't good enough. Sorry is not good enough. What you need to do, you want to impress me? Go back to school no, 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 and be no, the no. person, I'm not be the person that you used to be. Tell me about some of the really bad altercations you've gotten into. Picking up knives. Have you? Yeah, I did. Bleach? So, yeah, bleach. Throwing knives. people's stuff out the window. Yeah. Wiping yeah. people's car windows. Yeah. You'll pick up anything. I sure will. A knife? I sure will. A club, anything. I that... sure will. And you'll get right on in there? I will. Okay, Deborah, I want to move on to your baby. We're talking about parenting. This is the next generation. Okay. Uh, you plan that pregnancy? No, I did not plan it at all. Yeah. You know, I'm young. I still like to go out and party. And I mean, it happened. I slipped up and I got pregnant and I just didn't have an abortion. So who looks after the baby? My mother. I mean, I'm young. I still go out and party. And the only person I really trust my son with is my mother. What do you I drink? I sure do. I like Peace of Rock. And how drunk do you get? How, how drunk do I get? How drunk I mean, do you get? I drink till I throw up, then I drink some more, pass out, then drink more. Why? I mean, because that's like, it's like, it's like my escape going things. Like, okay. I feel like when I drink, I feel better than, like, how but I feel But when you inside. wake up in the morning, what happens? Your problems then double, triple. Well, that's it. Oh, that's it. That's it. That's it. Right. I want to move on. That's it. Okay, all right. I want to come back to your baby. Do you think that you're a good mom? Yes, I do. What makes a good mom? The only reason why I come home Late, early in the morning, because I don't feel I should come home to my child drunk. I don't feel I'd rather sober down. So why don't you go and get drunk in a party? Okay. okay. Because that's what I do, and nobody in this audience can have something to say, because y'all don't know me, y'all will never know me. Oh, Hang on just a minute. Well. Instead of everybody oh, well. just shouting at Deborah, does anyone actually have a question? Yeah, please, for... let me hear this. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, you. Yeah. Stand up for me. Stand up oh, for me. Oh, now the white girl's going to talk. Let me hear what you have to say, because you party party every night. <laughs> Do you want your son to grow up and look at you in this light? I mean, I don't, on. I don't, I don't. You but don't, I have but then time you're drinking, change. throwing bleach. I have what time to change. What if your son talks back to you one day? You just like throw him in the dryer. Like, what's your motive gonna be? You're just gonna oh, be. Oh, I'm not gonna kid? throw him in the dryer, but I'll probably throw you in the dryer. Not no. my son. Not my son. Not my son. Thank you. I just want to know, when you're doing all the midst of your madness, who watches your child? My mom. Your mom. And do you think that's okay? Like, that's a responsible mother. Um, I don't think because my mom's she's responsible for my child at all. I don't think she's responsible for her, but... But neither are you. No, I'm responsible for my child. I can be a very good mom. I can. I can. How, if your mama is watching your child, how are you responsible for your child? Because I had my child. I had You, you had it, but your mama had you, and look at what you're doing. Yes, yes. So how yes. responsible are you? Thank you. Well, Thank I'm, you. I'm still responsible. Deborah, one of the things that your aunt... KK said was that she kind of thinks your mom is somewhat responsible. I don't think my mom is responsible yes, at all because she, she, she reached out to give me help multiple times. I just didn't accept it. Let's meet your That's mom. Mia. After the break, we're going to meet your mom and we're going to work out where we go from here. Okay? All right, we'll be back after this. When we come back, a shocking revelation. I've been beat, abused, tampered with, all beat? that. Could it lead to a breakthrough for Deborah? I didn't have a childhood. I did not have a childhood at all. Who are you close to? And later. How many men do you think you've been with? 20 or 30, but I know of. You know what really scares me?
asked me when I used the word contraception, you didn't even know what it meant. Confronting out of control teen moms. We get to the heart of it now. Welcome back. Uh, we've been talking to KK, who is here today. She says to try to save her 16 year old niece, Deborah, from ruining her life and, and the life of her baby. Now, earlier, KK said that she blames her sister Sharon, Deborah's mother, for allowing Deborah's life to spiral out of control. I think uh, it's time we heard from Sharon. So come on in, Sharon. <laughs> Hi, Sharon. Hi, how are you? Good. So, are you to blame for your daughter's behavior? First of all, I'm Deborah's mother. I know what goes on in my home. Mm -hmm. I know what she do. I know what she don't do. One thing I want to say to you, you my sister. Us. Wait a minute. You my sister, and I love you. But one thing that me and you don't have in common, you're very aggressive. When I come to my child, I don't want to come to her aggressive because she's already aggressive. I want to teach Deborah that there are other ways. You don't have to be aggressive. You don't have to be angry. You don't have to fight. You can be who you are in a positive way. Way. Okay. This is why I'm talk? coming on this can show we... to get my child help All to right. show her you don't have to have the behavior that you have. But you how can... did she get into that behavior in the first place? Because my child was taken from me before she was two years old. My daughter was in. Four... Wait, no, no. Can I talk? Can I talk? Because I know what happened to me. Go ahead. I was taken from my mom yeah. before I was two years old. You and I've been to at least maybe, and I was in first grade, I've been to at least maybe 40 something homes in the past five years. I've been beat, abused, tampered with, beat? all that. Beat, put in beat tubs with hot water. Because she had to wires, go to the bathroom. She didn't get to Hang the on, bathroom. Let, 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 me hear, let me hear from Deborah. This all right, so I didn't been beat. I didn't been through a lot. I didn't been can, can bit I, by dogs because I didn't make beds up right. Can I ask you something? Can I ask you something? When was that point when something went down with you that was so violent, you thought, this is never going to happen to me again. I will get in there. I will do it before they do it unto me. Was there a point when you thought no more? It was a lot. A lot. A lot. I don't want to talk. No. Can, I, can I talk with you? I'm going to follow you. Okay. And if she can't express herself right now, she just no, can't. No, I want to hear your story because everybody, it's all about the parents. I want to. This is it's about not you. all about the parents. First of all, I don't care about who got what to say yeah. about me because yeah. don't nobody know me. Yeah. Nobody's ever going to know me because nobody take the time out to know me. Yeah. How my aunt feels, that's how she feels. She don't live with me, and yeah. she's talking about all this I ran track. She never came to none of my track meets. She never gave me no type of moral support yeah. when I was running track. Nobody did, not even my mom. So now everybody's saying, oh, she went the wrong way. When I was going the right way, nobody, nobody was there saying. to support me. I okay. went all over the world on, going that... to Tennessee, going nationals, Anyway, nobody never went with me. Only person that had to support me was my coach and myself. You had to depend on yourself. Yes, me. Since you were myself. a little girl. Since I was a little girl. I had my mom. She fought for me to get me out of fourth yeah, and yeah. I love her to death for that. But, but you, you can how I control on you. my anger yeah. is by going out drinking, partying, fighting people, and doing what I want to do. Because that's the only way I know how to cope with my anger. I can understand that. I know you sick of it. Yeah, I'm sick of it. I'm yeah. sick of it, and I'm sick of people judging me, yeah. not knowing what's really going on with me. You know why I asked that question? Because I really got the feeling from you that there was that point where things got so bad, and it's, it's not just you, where you think, you know what, no one's going to treat me like this anymore. I'm going to, you know, the, the, you talked about the threat if someone does something to you. Yeah, because when I was up, a foster kid, that's all I meant yeah. is be. I refuse to be beat on. Yeah, I refuse. Yeah. So you react. Yes, when I you react. see it coming. Yes, I do. And I it do. might not even be going down, but if you're threatened, you're, yeah, you're in there. Yeah, if I feel threatened, then I feel sorry for you. It's just like that. It might be small, but it's a very deceiving. Who are you close to? I'm not close to anybody but myself. But who hugs you and cuddles you and does... I mean, you're, what, 16? When no, did you have your childhood? I didn't have a childhood. I did not have a childhood at all. You want to change? I do want to change. I do. That's why I'm crying. I'm not crying. But matter of fact, can we go back on stage? Yeah, come on. <laughs> did, did you... I when I say, did you hear what she said? Yeah. I mean, I mean hear. I mean, not just the words. Deborah, what I want to say to you is this. You already know I love you. Yeah. 
And I want you to love yourself. Okay? Yes, you helped me out with the children. Yes, you did. I will never deny that. Okay? But I want what's best for you. And what I want you to do now is to get your life together, get back into school, go back to track and do what you need best. Be you. I'm not gonna judge you for what you did weeks ago, months ago. We're starting a new life today. That's why we're here. Okay? Okay? That's it. Now, give me a hug. Okay. Look to me, and I only can talk from the outside, that there's a cycle that goes from generation to generation. Okay. My whole family do not know how to love each other. They don't respect each other. They're all aggressive. Deborah, they don't know, do you know how to show each other love. Deborah, you actually are in a really powerful position. You now have the power to change the history from generation to generation. And that means changing the way you parent, even though you're a young parent. You, you have the power, you are the, the you know when a, a train is going along a track, you now have a, the power to pull a switch and make your family history go in a totally different direction. That's a very powerful position to be in. So you need to treat that carefully. Now what I would like to do is, maybe you want to spend a little time together, but towards the end of the program, I'd just like to spend some time, if that's okay with you, Deborah, working with you kind of as the standard bearer for the next generations of your family, and you as a mom. Is that okay with, yes. with mom and aunt? Yes. Is that a deal? You know what I'm saying? I hear you. Coming up... You know what? Pity ain't gonna work no more. Becca thinks it's her right to party and sleep around. How many men do you think you've been with? 20 or 30 that I know of. Oh. And I'm gonna live how I want to. While her parents take care of her three-month-old son. She doesn't wash his clothes. She doesn't sterilize his bottles. You do all of that? Yes. And there could be another surprise on the way. Do you think you're pregnant? I think I might be. Oh, no, Becca. Introducing Mistakes by Nosy, the mobile gaming story app that puts you in control of your own thrilling adventure. With Mistakes by Nosy, immerse yourself in a world of thrilling choices and captivating stories. With hundreds of paths to choose from and new stories added regularly, you'll always have new mistakes to make. Download Mistakes by Nosy and play anytime, anywhere. Mistakes by Nosy, where every choice matters. Search Mistakes by Nosy in the Android and Apple app stores. Download Mistakes by Nosy now. Confronting out of control teen moms, we get to the heart of it now. Please welcome Ron and his wife, BJ. All right. 18 years ago, Ron and BJ were overjoyed when they adopted a baby girl named Becca. <laughs> Cute. Well, today their hearts that were once filled with joy are now filled with fear and despair. At 17, Becca got pregnant with her now three-month-old son, Jacob. Now, instead of taking on the responsibility of motherhood, BJ and Ron are now raising baby Jacob, while Becca is out sleeping around, partying, and using hardcore drugs. Listen to their story. Family has always meant the world to me and my wife, BJ. When we first adopted Becca, it was a prayer that had been answered. When she became 15, it was a nightmare. She started messing around with boys. She goes through men like she goes through underwear. I even found pictures of her private parts that she was texting to other guys. I was so disappointed. Being a pastor, I was disappointed in Becca, but also knew I was a father, and we had to pull together and help her. Becca has no parenting skills. There are times when she is so hungover that she sleeps through the baby's crying at night. I just want her to bond with her son. Ron, what was Becca like when she was growing up? 
Becca was adorable. She was sweet. She was so had that beautiful red hair. Mm -hmm. You just couldn't help but love her. She brought so much energy into the room where you were at. I mean, you just cuddled her. You know, everybody said, what a sweet, wonderful child she was when we were growing yeah. up. So, so, BJ, when did things change? Why did they change? Well, Becca was about 14 or 15. We started noticing that she was dressing more provocatively. You found a, te a, a text message? She was sending pictures of Yes, her? she of was. We were on vacation, and the children had gone down to the pool. And um, I happened to use that as an opportunity to look at Becca's phone. And um, when I looked at it, I could not believe what I saw. Becca had sent a picture of her vagina to some guys. Oh. We've jumped to the baby, but when did you discover that she was pregnant in the first place? Well, we didn't discover Rebecca was pregnant until she was almost ready to deliver. What? Yeah. Well, she hit it or? She, well, was, she, she was, it was in February and she'd gotten pregnant in July. And so she had no prenatal care. Um, but she was she just, what, wearing baggy or in baggy clothes? She was clothes wearing or? loose clothes. Yeah. And in fact, when we saw her maybe in December at Christmas time, we asked her if she was pregnant because she had gained weight. And she said, no, I'm not pregnant. So you end up holding the baby, literally. Is that, that, that's the way it is now? Yes. Yes, but yeah, that's it. We're, we're, we're raising the baby. You know, what, what does she do? Where is she? What, what she does do? she do? Yeah. Well, she ain't partying. <laughs> <laughs> what did she do? Well, what, Becca what? works a little bit. She parties a little bit. And then we take care of Jacob. My wife takes care of Jacob. She's not a good mom. No. She, yeah, I think she loves her son, Jacob. Yes. But she has, she's not using the skill that she should have as a mom. Like changing diapers, feeding. She doesn't do that. No. She very, she's very never silly. bathed him. She's never she's given never him a bath. She's never bathed him? No. I've given him every bath. She doesn't wash his clothes. She doesn't sterilize his bottles. You do all of that? Yes. What are you going to do if she gets pregnant again? I'm not raising this one. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. So what, what do the two of you actually want to say to her? What is it? What message do you wish she would hear? This is the message we wish we could tell Becca. Becca, we love you with all of our heart. Aww. We want the best for you. We've always wanted the best for you. That's why we adopted you. God gave us a chance to put you in our life. Wow. And we want you, <laughs> Becca. We want to give you that opportunity. As parents, to parent you, to love you the way you're supposed to be loved. The way God designed it, to send that love to you. But that's what's not happening. We don't want that child to go through that rejection, rejection. that she had to deal she with as an adopted with. child. We want him to grow up knowing his mommy is there for him and she loves him and she wants to be a part of his life. She's missing so much. Okay, okay. So, um, is she pregnant now? It's possible because the way she sleeps with different men and goes with different things, stuff like that. It's All right, well, I'm going to tell you, we gave her a pregnancy test. Um, I don't know what the results are either, but we will reveal those results later on when we get them. And when we come back, we will meet Becca, the team mom, who believes it's her right to party, it's her right to sleep around and use drugs while her parents take care of her son. Stay with us. Up next, you know what? The kitty act don't work no more. Becca is here to face her parents. How many men do you think you've been with? 20 or 30 that I know of. Can anybody talk sense into this out of control teen? You don't want another baby, but you're not using contraception. As an 18 year old, you're talking more like a 12 year old. You are the fuck. You're off my stage. Confronting out-of-control teen moms. We get to the heart of it now. Welcome back. Welcome back. Before the break, we were talking to Ron and his wife, BJ, who are distraught over the fact that their 18-year-old daughter, Becca, who is also a teen mom, is spiralling down a path of self-destruction. Now, before we meet Becca in person, listen to what she had to say about her life. My name is Becca. I'm 18. And growing up in a pastor's house sucks. My parents were afraid I was going to go out and do stupid stuff. Get into drugs, go drink alcohol, 
maybe even die. They had to let me get out sometimes, and when I did, I did everything that they didn't want me to do. I've had sex with 20-something, maybe 30-something people that I remember. I've had drunk nights and stuff might have happened that I don't know of. I was 17 when I got pregnant. Um, I didn't know until I was 32 weeks. I went to the doctor one day because my hands were swelling and I didn't know what was going on. And they gave me a pregnancy test and they told me I was pregnant. I was like, what? I don't go for abortion. And I was given up as a child and I went through adoption and I don't want my child to go through that. I came to the show because my parents have been pushing me and pushing me to say I need to grow up. I mean, I'm gonna grow up when I want to. I do have my downfalls in my mothering part. It's just, I wanna be a teenager too and they don't understand that. I still have a life besides my child. Well, I think it's time we meet Becca. Becca, come on out. You know what? The pity act don't work no more. Oh. 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 Right, Becca. So, Becca, what are you saying? The pity act don't work. Don't start crying. You cried so many times around me, Daddy, it don't even work. Let me hear from you. Everything you said on that tape. So, how many men do you think you've been with? 20 or 30 that I know of. When you say that you know of, what do you mean that you know of? Yeah, I've drank and I've done stuff that I don't know about, but I mean... So you, you've gotten so drunk that men can do whatever they want with you, they can treat you like they're a piece of meat and you didn't know about it. Is that what you're yeah. telling me? I mean, I'm not proud of it, but it's happened. Yeah. And so you got pregnant. Do you know who the daddy was? Yeah, it's between two people. I was in a relationship getting out of one. Okay. Um, let's talk about the drinking. My How drink? much do you drink? Almost every time I go out, but I hadn't drank that much oh, after I left. Oh, back up. Please. Shut Please. up, no, y'all don't know what I've done. I heard from your mom that you had never actually bathed your son. Is that true? No, that can't be true. I helped bathe him, tried to help him bathe him once, but when he cries, I can't take it. You can't take it? So, yes, yeah, somebody said, why did you have a baby? Because I love him and he's mine, and I'm gonna take care of him. When I, when I get ready. No, You're not, that doesn't work that way. You have to be a mom when he needs you, not when it's convenient for you to do it. Oh, good, okay, okay. It's okay, because I'm leaving, and y'all ain't gotta worry about it. I'll take you with me, and y'all won't see him again. Becca, do you feel like you're out of control? No, I think I'm a teenager. Uh, and I'm gonna live how I want to. And living how you want to means what? Not using contraception? Not using contraception. You know, Becca, what she's talking about. Not taking responsibility when you have sex. That's what she's talking about. I'm on one man right now, and I'm planning on staying with him, and if I don't want to, I won't go. I won't. You know what really scares me? When I use the word contraception, you didn't even know what it meant. No. <laughs> you want more baby? No, not right now. But if I have one, I'm actually gonna take care of this one, because I see how I did. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so, so hang on, this, this isn't making sense. You're saying that you don't want another baby, but you're not using contraception, but if you have another baby, so be it. Why don't you take control of your life and at least have some contraception? I don't care. I don't want it. It's my decision. I don't want it. You don't want it. So, if you, so you could end up with ten babies? No. But you don't want to use contraception? No. Okay. I, 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 you know what? As an 18-year-old, you're talking more like a 12-year-old, my darling. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Becca, what drugs are you using? Do right you now? What drugs I are you using? I smoke pot. And? and I, sometimes I take pills. And what kind of pills are you talking about? Oxycontin or Xanax. Oh, God, I didn't know that. That's your child. You gotta think about this. It's you. not around him. I don't do it near it him. It doesn't matter if it's around him or near him. Listen, listen, At Becca. least I ain't exposed listen, him Becca. to it. Listen to me for just one second. Becca, you can't do this and have a child. You can, at some point in your life, baby, daddy loves you. But at some point in your life, you gotta be responsible. You gotta take responsibility. I know. I know. And look, look, listen to me. Okay. Well, can I, can I just... Yeah, So you're, you're using, you're taking all these pills. Are you pregnant? Do you think you're pregnant? I think I might be. Well... <laughs> We... I hadn't taken them in forever and I hadn't smoked in forever. All right, we did a out. pregnancy test. Um, and are you ready to find out whether you're yes. pregnant or not? Oh, 
Thank God. Thank you. Keep it that way. Thank you, You've got an opportunity now to keep it that way. Where do you want to be in five years' time? I'm planning on stopping everything I'm doing. I mean, it's going to take time. Yeah, I want to finish my partying stage, and it's not gone yet. You don't think you've experienced everything that you can? No, I want to live my life to the fullest. Becca, what what else is what, what do you say? If you keep on. Be yeah. Becca, come on. You can't, you can't Be do what you're party doing. Party has to okay. stop, Becca. You got Jacob. Look at Jacob. He's precious. He's precious. You're missing. Look, you're missing the most wonderful thing that drugs can't give you what Jacob is giving you. Okay, well, when we come back, time to plant the seeds of change. Stay with us. Later, someone's here to show Deborah where her choices are leading. I watch many people get killed in that shower. And we confront Becca with the hardest choice a teen mom can make. Have you ever considered having your child adopted? Ain't no one taking my child from me. Then you have to start being a 100% parent now. Introducing Mistakes by Nosy, the mobile gaming story app that puts you in control of your own thrilling adventure. With Mistakes by Nosy, immerse yourself in a world of thrilling choices and captivating stories. With hundreds of paths to choose from and new stories added regularly, you'll always have new mistakes to make. Download Mistakes by Nosy and play anytime, anywhere. Mistakes by Nosy, where every choice matters. Search Mistakes by Nosy in the Android and Apple App Stores. Download Mistakes by Nosy now. Confronting out of control teen moms. We get to the heart of it now. Talking to teen moms and their families who are here today, desperate to save the futures of their wild teen daughters and their children. Now, earlier on in the show, we heard about 16-year-old Deborah, who is leading a life of uh, chaos, I'd call it. Uh, and where does crime and chaos lead us? Either dead or to prison. With us today is someone who knows all about prison, and he's here to take you on a journey into your possible futures. Please welcome Larry. Uh, Larry, now, you, you wrote a book called Gangster Redemption. I developed a program called the Reality Check Program, and I deal with young people. I spent 11 straight years in prison, three years in the hole for fighting abuses that go on in prison. I lost my 15-year-old, 15-month-old daughter, and it breaks my heart every day. My son was six years old when I went away, and my daughter was 15 months. And I lost their whole life. And I can never get that back. And I'm going to show you the real deal. I want you to come with me. I'm going to show you girls who didn't make the right choice. You got a future. You know, you're a smart girl. I've been watching you. and You have a heart. But you went through a lot of things I went through. I started my crime career young, my wild stuff young. But you can change. And to the parents, people do change. Thank I you think very you'll make much. it. Thank you. Um, and I think that's really important because there are a lot of mums in prison. That's what we forget about. It's not to freak you out or anything, but you, I think it would be good for you to hear how they felt at your age and how they maybe felt invincible. Um, and that way you can start avoiding some of those problems. Now, as for looking into the future, um, do you want to hang on to your child, Becca? Yeah. Because I've got something for you that you really need to consider. Have you ever considered having your child adopted? It's not happening. We've got documents that can actually start you on the course to having your child adopted. No, I'm because that way it. you can that way you can really party and you can do all the drugs you want. No, you don't it's have not these happening. people on your back. You don't have them bothering you. No. But ain't no one taking my child from me. What about your child? What about how your child feels? What about how your child feels? You're talking about no one taking my child. What about your That's child? That's my child. And it, Can you give your I child a good life? That. I went through that, and he's not Why going through it. Why are you putting it. Jacob through that? That's what I want to understand. Why are you putting he Jacob through He ain't going through, through the adoption. I know, but you're putting Jacob okay. with the rejection that you went through. I don't care if it's your That's my child. If you don't want to put your child through adoption, then you have to start being a 100% parent now. 
right now. Right now. I know. It's time for her. You telling me? It's time to go out and get started with that. I've heard it from you plenty. I don't want to hear it no more. I don't need help. I can do it on my own. No, I take my hat off to you that you can do it all by yourself. Because you know what? I couldn't do it all by myself. At one stage, I was in such a mess. I was in a psychiatric hospital, and they came to me, and people were talking about taking my babies away. And you know what? I couldn't do it by myself. And look where I am today. And I couldn't do it by myself. But you're better than me. You're better than me. Family is everything. OK. You know that. Family is okay. everything. I, I want to take it's a break. I want to take a break. Into. I want to take a break. And after the break, what I want to do is work with the two young ladies here. Is that okay for both of you? Deborah, are you happy with that? Yeah. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Okay, we'll be back after this. When we come back, a serious sit down with these out of control teens. You have the opportunity to change the future of your family. And Deborah gets a hard look at her future. I watch many people get killed in that shower. When you start doing drugs, when you hang out with the wrong crowd, it takes you here or you're gonna die. You are the fire! Get off my stage! <laughs> Confronting out of control teen moms, we get to the heart of it now. Earlier in the show, we met Deborah, an out-of-control teen mom with a taste for violence. Is it true that you hit your grandmother? She there? got in the way okay. and she got hit. Then we were introduced to Becca, a teen mom who refuses to act responsibly. You don't want another baby, but you're not using contraception. No. Now it's time to take Becca backstage, away from the lights and crowd, for a one-on-one -on -one session. You can change things. That's a really important power. I want you to look at that little Becca and what you want to say. Now, these yeah. dolls are only toys, but they're an effective tool in getting through to people. What are you going to warn little Becca about? You couldn't do what your friends tell you. Yeah. So it will mess your life up. Yeah. You have the opportunity to change the future of your family. Now Larry Lawton, an ex-con turned counsellor, will show Deborah where violence leads. It all starts with a grand tour. I lived in a hole like this for three years. I watched many people get killed in that shower. Then it's time for Deborah to meet some other moms who chose a life of crime Deborah, over their own children. Choices. I have a 20-year-old son. I've been in and out of prison all his life. I, I would love to have back that time that I missed with my kid. I came in when I was 20 years old. I thought I was untouchable, you know? When you start doing drugs, when you hang out with the wrong crowd, it takes you here or you're gonna die. I did hear that you, you like to fight. You can't come in here and wanna fight everyone. I often tell people if I hit somebody, they win, whether I knock them out or not, because they control my emotions. And that's why these girls are here. This ain't what's happening, Mom. And you got a future if you want it. Make one good choice a day. One good choice will keep multiplying to better choices, better choices. One bad choice could ruin your life. All right? Mom, you got a good daughter. You really do. You really do. Thank you. You got a good daughter, man. Thank you. I am trying to change. I'm going to do my best to change. Give her a hug because she deserves it. Oh. Love you. Love you too. Confronting out of control teen moms, we get to the heart of it now. I think we've started the healing process with the teens we met today and we hope they take this opportunity to get their lives on track and, most importantly, become better mothers to their babies. Now, it's... 